All right, welcome to the Hartsville Football Coaches Show. I'm Margaret Aaron Prater alongside head coach Bert Newton. And we want to thank you for tuning in on our YouTube channel and watch the guys on the NFHS network if you can't make it to Oxford Friday night. Coach, let's thank our sponsors. We've got Agency on Main, of course, our title sponsor, Eddie Pruitt Ford, Express Bath, Marmac Commercial Real Estate, Peck Funeral Home, Coleman Regional Hospital, and Life Church. Coach, we've got a lot of people on the show today. Okay. So it's your kind of show. It's going to be short and sweet this week. Um, let's talk about Minor, 64-7 victory. It went about as good as you could hope for a opening playoff game. Yes, you think? Um, what did you see that needed work? Uh, I mean, I don't know if we needed work. I, I'll say this. I think our special teams were really, really good. Um, and, you know, they shot themselves in the foot. You know, we didn't try to score 64 points. Uh, even at halftime, it was 31 nothing, And I, I told Shane on the interview, I said, said you going to throw it around? I said, absolutely not. We're going to run it and get out of here. And, and then Coach Lang said, hey, I want Carter to throw it some. And he did, and he did well, um, which is a good bonus for us. But at the end, they, you know, they, they, they had special teams mistakes and threw one to Jace Pruitt. And so the score got out of hand, um, but it wasn't it, it was not our intention. Right, right. Um, did we really kick the ball on third and 20 in the second quarter? All right, so that was the best call of the night. And everybody's <laughs> ripping me about it. And I was like, because I, I, I mean, even when I told, I said to Coach Lang, I said, uh, hey, uh, him and Coach Prater, I said, hey, do you, so I, I think I'm going to Superman punt this thing, which means our quarterback's going to kick it. And he says, third and 20. And uh, Coach uh, Lake said, hey, you know it's third down, right? And I was like, I know exactly what it is. And I think we can get inside the five. And 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 we're not going to convert this. Or, or we're going to have a chance of throwing a bad, you know, getting a running back hit on a screen or, or, you know, or taking a sack. And I said, let's just, um, I got that, uh, I got that from uh, Coach Anderson at Vestavia years ago. He would punt on third down sometimes when it's third and 20 plus. And uh, he would gain 70 yards of, of grass. And I think that was, if you're playing good defense like we were, we were. I think, I think it's, it's a, it's a well, um, it's okay. I love it. Everybody around me was asking the same. Did know. you know it was third down? Yes, yep. I, I, I'm we assuming did. they did. Yep. Um, and I've got to talk about one of my favorite plays that happened all season. Because we had the lead, if we had not had such a significant lead, I don't think it would have been my favorite play. But Westendorf goes up to kick the extra point. Your officials thought they were going to get hit. They duck. <laughs> they don't look. They look at each other and do this. And so they just collectively decide that it was no good. First, did it make it? And second, have you ever seen anything like that? It went right to the uprights, and I'm so confused on why they, they ducked. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm confused. I'm it sorry. It was kind of a knuckleball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe their depth perception isn't great. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk about Oxford. We'll be right back. Come see us at Eddie Pruitt Ford. We're a proud supporter of Hartsell Athletics. here with our co-offensive coordinators. We've got Coach Will Lane, we've got Coach Matt Prater. And guys, I'm going to ask about Minor before I put you on the hot seat. Uh, we're looking at positives. You played a relatively clean game. Um, you did all your benchmarks. You hit all of those. Um, lots of guys got to play. Let's talk about, though, who I call QB 1.5, right? Because he's not technically a QB 2 because right. he, he gets in the game a good bit. Um, what can you say about his performance? You know, I, I, he played really, really well. It was nice for him to throw the ball. Um, I've been saying it at the, on this show and at the luncheon, uh, you know, he can throw. He has the ability to throw. He's gotten much improved throwing. He, we just haven't asked him to do that a whole lot. And so it was good for him to get those throws under his belt and, and to put it on tape. And uh, I'm just glad he's getting to play because he, you know, he hasn't complained one time. And he is uh, just one of those players that just really fun to be around. And he's accepted his role. And he's, he's a big part of our offense. Well, and, and – yeah, he's, I thought he did a great job. How about your line, Coach Prater? How are they, are they doing what they're supposed to do? Yeah, they are. They, um, I thought they played pretty well Friday. I um, mean, it's loaded box, so things are going to be hard. Uh, safeties are fitting quick, so. Um, but, yeah, I thought they played pretty well. Okay, now we had, our, when QB1 was in, we had quite a few incompletions. And as we know, this is a team effort. Right. It is not necessarily all on him. Right. 
Um, what are we going to do to clean that up? Because in reviewing things on Oxford, you're not going to have the opportunity to have those mistakes. Mm -hmm. So what are what are we doing? Well, I mean, for one, it's man to man, and it was tight coverage. Like some of those Demarcus is it's, it's good coverage, and okay. uh, so that's what we've talked with them about. Is like when you get good tight man coverage, I mean, there's going to be some incompletions there. And so uh, just not to panic and we got to be on time with it. So, you know, some of that's to be expected when you play good teams and all that. But no doubt about it, that we're going to continue the trend of we have got to start the game better, particularly in the passing game. Once we get going, it's fine, but we got to start better. So. Okay. And <clears throat> this past week, I had one of my favorite experiences I have had working with the team. Yeah. And we've also had one of our more viral social media posts, and that involved a little T-shirt that had uh, Coach Prater's mug on it. <laughs> it was awesome. So tell us about how that came about and um, are they going to wear them during walkthrough again this week? Because you played pretty well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, of course I, the players love it. They were all about it. Uh, no, they, uh, you know, he, he's a grumpy old guy, but the, the players all love him. And so, you know, he's extremely hard on them. And uh, once they get through, I don't know, once they get mature enough to handle it, they learn that he's just a big old teddy bear. And so, uh, you know, the, we started the year out and it was like, we wanted to make it fun, like raise your hand if you love Coach Brader, you know, pat him on the back or whatever. And then it slowly morphed into, we got to just get a shirt for it. And so we, that was a, it was a fun time. And yeah, I, I, I see the shirts up there in the school. So it's a good trend. All right, you could sell them. Yeah, for I've sure. got a lot of requests. Yeah. How, how can I get one? I uh, had some family members phone in. You can see we you may start out. us a side business, <laughs> Coach Prater shirts. Um, let's talk about uh, Oxford. I'm asking Coach Newton the same question. Their defense is um, intense, I think would be one way to put it. How do we prepare when we're facing an opposing team that's known for its high scoring capabilities? And, you know, they have a shutdown defense. We're a ground and pound kind of offense. Right. So how do we prepare for that? Well, I mean, I, I think we have to, you know, take what we've done to get us to this point. Um, I know you, you mentioned we're ground and pound. And we're we're going to have to do that Friday. Um, we're going to have to you know, eliminate negatives, you know, and just like we did last week, you know, you said, talked about playing pretty clean. We've got to continue to do that. And just to understand that it's going to be a big physical game and we're going to have to match physicality and, and kind of do what we've been doing. So as far as in the box anyway. Okay. You, you uh, yeah, I mean, that, there's no doubt they're, they're really good. And I mean, you can see it when you, you know, cut the tape on, the players can see it, they're fast. They're much more physical than what they've been the last couple of years, and uh, they're just overall a really, really good team. And so our, our kids know that. Uh, we know we're going to have to start really fast, and we cannot wait for a quarter for the speed of the game. And one thing I've been telling them is, you know, they are really good, but we're good as well. And we got to go in believing that. And, you know, it, it, if we do that, then we'll give ourselves a chance, and that's all we can ask for. Well, this will be a good uh, test of – your abilities, uh, the psychological coaching, yeah. or, you know, the X's and O's, I think y'all pretty much got handled. Um, I know the personalities of these, of a lot of these key players, right? Um, they're, we've talked about the margin of error is very small. How do you motivate them without, w create intensity without a panic? How are you going to do that going into the Oxford game? Uh, I mean, I I would say they're probably not a big fan of me and Coach Prater right now. Uh, up to this point, we've been pretty intense this week. And, and we told them this morning when we got done, like, we're doing this to, for y'all to know that you're, you, I mean, you're facing a really, really good team. And we have no plays to waste within this game. Right. And so I don't, I don't think they're panicking. I think they're understanding, you know, how, how honest we're being with them. And I think we have a mature team. So I think we'll go in there and we'll handle it the best we can. Yeah, one game season. Let's go. That's right. All right. Thanks for your time, guys. We'll be right back. All right, we're here with one of our highlighted players of the week. We've got Carter Lee, who's our junior quarterback. And 
I have Carter in my class and I refer to him as QB 1.5, not QB 2, because you're a big part of the offense. So let me let me ask you this question. Um, when I see you play, I know your game right, I can see it in your eyes. So how do you keep into perspective knowing that you're not the starter, but they're going to need you? So how do you prepare for that? Yeah, so pretty much, you know, just uh, kind of making every uh, opportunity count rep, you know. Just when I get in, trying to be explosive as I can, as physical as I can with my runs, because, you know, that's pretty much my game right there. So, But when I do get to pass it, you know, just making the most of it, being accurate with the throws, you know, just being loose, kind of having fun with the game, you know, just going out there and doing what I can do. Well, you did okay last week. You were five for five with two touchdowns. So uh, I I'd like those numbers this next week. Um, who's the most underrated player on our team? You can pick offense or defense. Who's not getting the credit they deserve? Um, I think Ethan Haynes. Ethan, I love Ethan Haynes. Great kid, you know, and he does a really good job of blocking. I don't, don't think anybody really sees that, but Ethan Haynes, I think, is the most underrated. Well, and you throw those routes across the middle to that, mm -hmm. that yes, kid, and, and you're going to get hit. Yes, his hands are very underrated as well. So I think it's, I think well, he's Especially very now that he's not catching. He has two, he has three fingers. <laughs> so. <laughs> so he actually can catch now. Um, what do you think is your best quality aside from your athletic ability? What do you um, bring to the game that's an intangible? I think just uh, kind of my mental ability, just to stay locked in the game, you know, never get too high or low, kind of stay even kill, you know, just uh, just go through my reads, you know, just kind of anything, nothing really kind of affects me, I don't think, just kind of know everything's going to be all right next play and my guy's got me. So I think that's, I think that's what helps me a lot. That's awesome. Um, how are you holding up physically? Because, I mean, we've got nine straight weeks of mm. games. How are you holding up? I think I'm feeling really good, actually. You know, I know I've been getting hit quite a bit, but I'm still still feeling good, still working out and stuff. So, okay. everybody. Yeah. Good deal. All right, now the rapid fire. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, um, weight room dog. Who's your weight room dog? Uh, probably Jay Lee. Jay Lee. Jay Lee, mm -hmm. you've, you've pretty much won it this season. Mm -hmm. um, worst musical taste? Oh, uh... Probably Chris Hudson. He listens to like, I mean, no, no offense to Chris, but like, he, he listens to like kind of like the old rap that's been like back. You know, he doesn't really, we have to kind of like tell him what we used to listen to. So, so he would have liked my Ice Cube on the post on Insta this week. Probably. Okay. He like, Chris likes, Chris likes any type of music on me. Okay, okay. Um, best motivator? Um, probably, probably Cole Miles. Okay. Cole Miles or Tampa Shiny. They're always, you know, Every time, anytime I do anything good, you know, they're there to pick me up or anytime I do anything bad. So they're just always there to support me and, you know, anything awesome. I do. Awesome. Um, who's coming to get you if your car breaks down? Probably Eli King. That dude, would, that dude would leave his house in a heartbeat to come pick me up for sure. So I think and he's, he'd help me. Okay, okay. Um, and then who would you let date your sister? Uh, God. I love this question. Uh, let me think. <laughs> um. Why J-Mo? J-Mo. I think J-Mo. Really? Yeah, I mean, me and I like J-Mo. Me and okay, J-Mo. Okay. J-Mo's, I mean, he's respectful. That's, that's his first vote. Really? That's his I first I think J-Mo, he's, he's respectful. I like okay. J-Mo. Okay. So. All right. I you did great. Be. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. This is Shane Odom with Marmack Commercial Real Estate. We approach real estate with our three-I approach, integrity, intelligence, and innovation. To be your full-service real estate company that can handle all your real estate needs. From commercial, such as warehouse, retail, apartments, to land, farms, residential developments, along with houses, such as investment homes or your dream home. Marmac Commercial Real Estate has over 15 years experience providing award-winning, full-service real estate experience. One team, endless possibilities. Marmac Commercial Real Estate. We're here with our player of the game. We've got linebacker senior Noah Gibson. And, you know, with our hot takes, our rapid fire, mm -hmm. you, you actually got a couple of votes for the date thing. So, <laughs> so, so that's pretty good. So um, we had an unusual vote this week, so that, that'll be fun to watch. But a first question, you're known for being the smart guy on the mm -hmm. squad. Um, do you use analytics and go off numbers, or do you just go off your gut? Um, I think it's a mix of both. So practice, what we do is, you know, you build that gun instinct. So when you're on the field, nothing surprises you. But when you're in the film room, you're learning the analytical side of things. So for me, I like learning the analytics so I can know what to expect. And then while the play's happening, the gut instincts 
kick in. You like those tendencies. Yes. Yeah, I, I like the like numbers. Um, I, I do too. So let's look at this. Give me the analysis for a team that's going to average 416 yards of offense per game against. And this is their, they played everybody. They're, they're yeah. good guys. Yeah. So what would you, we're not saying this is what you're doing. Mm. What would you do? I mean, that, that's the kind of team, you know, who just does everything well. So you just kind of got to look at the thing they do the least well and, you know, attack that. So, you know, try to take away their weapons as best as you can. Awesome. Okay. Um, we spoke briefly uh, in here and then on the sideline at mm -hmm. one game about you getting in on some offensive <laughs> sets. Have you managed to persuade them? Uh, I have a little success, but I'll, it's a secret. I'm not allowed <laughs> to tell anybody. Okay. Um, how are you holding up physically? Nine weeks. Uh, about as good as you can through nine weeks, I think. Okay. Um, you know, we've got we've got a bunch of guys who are battling through stuff, but I think I've been pretty fortunate. Well, um, and everybody, you know. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's beat up. It's hard to make it through nine weeks of the season without feeling a little something. Okay, who's going to be our guy or group that's going to show up against Oxford and be our playmaker? Who's, who's Who are we going to look at? Um, I think you can always expect big things from the D-line, so I'm going to say those guys, you know. I trusting them to get the job done. Well, you know, if I was defense coordinator, which I'm not, but they can't get the 416 if they can't get rid of the ball. You're right. right? You're right. So these guys might might play a role. You're right. You know, if we, if we can scheme it. Okay, mm -hmm. we got a rapid fire, mm -hmm. but you've already gotten to do the players, so you get yes. to do the coaches. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, who's going to be the weight room dog of the coaches? Coach Holly. I think Holly. he's swept it. Yeah, Holly has swept it. Yeah. Um, worst music? taste who, who who do you not want to end up giving you're not giving them the aux cord you do not want to get in the car with them I I don't think it's necessarily the worst but definitely the most different is also coach Holly okay he's also the only one I know the best so okay um best motivator I think coach Newton he's he does a good job at rallying the troops I think okay um who's coming to get you if your car breaks down I'd say coach Newton as well okay so we'll, we'll call coach Newton yeah. and then I love this one who's going to take the longest to get game day ready Coach Diffin. I think he's almost swept that one. <laughs> he you know, swept mustache, that one. He has, he has always pristine. Mm. Okay, thanks for your time. We'll be Thank right you. back. Looking to remodel your home bathroom? Call Express Bath today. They were good people to work with. I had no trouble with them. We always take care of everybody, no, no matter how big and small. The team of Express Bath, we do what we say we're going to do. The highlight was seeing a new shower in a 60-year-old house. It was a great experience. We're a real company, we're real people, and, and we love serving real customers. Call us to schedule an appointment today. Express Bath, we'll bring the duck. Alabama owned and Alabama loved. Here with defensive coordinator Moose Cole and Coach, um, your starters <clears throat> got another shutout. Um, Noah Gibson is our player of the week. Let's talk about Noah and what he's meant to the game and how he's performed over the season. Oh, he's been great, and what he means <clears throat> to me to this team. He, he kind of exemplifies what you know what we're all about in terms of you know intelligence, toughness, and, and all of those things. And, and he's been that way since since day one, not just the season. He's he's a big big part of who we are. He's going to be, I have a feeling he's going to be a success after football too. He will be highly successful. In um, he does. And, and let's talk about another guy. I have watched him get so close and he finally got his pick six and that's Jason Pruitt. Um, what can you say? Do you think he's playing his best ball right now? Absolutely. He is. And, and he's been close, like I said, you know, I think he had one at the end of uh, we had on the playoffs last year, maybe. Was it last year? Center point, we had a pick, pick six. Um, but I, when you're around the ball as much as he is, it's going, it's going to happen at some some point. Well, I've seen it. He's gotten close. Yes. But but he finally got his his catch. Uh, let's talk about Oxford. They're going to average 258 yards passing per game, mm -hmm. and 416 yards of offense. How do you stop that and keep that ball in front of you? Without giving away um, our game. I, I think that's the key is to keep it in front of you. Um, like I said, that's really easy to set up here and say and, and write down on paper to keep it in front of you. Uh, they got, you know, it's a great program. They got great players. Uh, they got great coaches. And um, quarterback can make every throw that he needs to make. And when he gets it out there, those guys can take it to the house at any point. So um, we'll have to be really disciplined um, and, and make tackles and, and not let the ball get over our head. Um, and then also, who are we going to say when we look back that just played out of their mind to make this game a success? Who, what group are you keying in on 
as far as, you know, the, these guys have got to show up. And I, I know um, all of them will. But. Well, their offense, it's, it's going to have to be all of them. Okay. Um, and the back end, obviously, you know, looks, looks important because of the <clears throat> passing game and the quarterback and, and all that. But we've got to be, we've got to be dominant in the, in the box also, um, you know, to, to get pressure on the quarterback and, uh, and the style. They, they can run the ball too. That's the passing game's, you know, what people pay attention to. But uh, running backs are really good. Offensive line's really good. They're just, they're really good. So we're all going to have to play out of our minds. Yeah, I think their running back only averages like 97 yards a game. That's just it. Yeah, just. Yeah, that's just running plays. That's not yeah. when they throw it to him. Right, time. right. Yeah. And then they've got a receiver that's averaging over 100 yards rushing. I mean, passing, receiving. See, here we go, yeah. here we go. Just only takes one. the wand a minute. Oh, no, he's not the only one. Oh, he's just say. one of the. One of the many. That, yeah. Right, right. A lot of good players. They're, they're decent. Yeah, they're, they're pretty decent. Good. Okay, well, that's, that's all I've got for you today because we had a lot of people on the show trying to keep it under 30 minutes. So I thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. We're back with our Eddie Pruitt Ford fan question of the week. First off, she wants to congratulate you on your first playoff win as a head coach. And then second, she wants to know how the depth chart looks going into the week. Uh, I mean, the depth chart's good. I mean, everybody on offense is healthy. Um, you know, we got some bumps and bruises like normal playoff, first round, second round team it is. Um, you know, it's funny. We talk about the the depth chart. Uh, you know, when I, I was the defense coordinator here in 2018 when Coach Gossage last year. And we were really, really good on defense, like number one in the state and won a bunch of awards because of it. And not because of me, because of the kids. And uh, we, but we played 11 guys. And uh, Keandre would come over on, on third downs if he was rested. And, but we played 11 guys. And we're not like that anymore. We, we, we've got seven defense linemen that play, five linebackers roll in, uh, three outside linebackers, hybrid safeties roll in at two spots. Uh, two safeties in one spot, and then three corners in, in two spots. So we're playing about 20-something guys. And so we're built different. The depth chart's great. Not only do, do we, um, you know, kind of, they push them, each other in practice because if somebody's lacking, then, hey, next guy up. So, um, you know, we, we're playing more guys than we ever have, and, and that's, that's a good thing. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Thanks, Coach. When it comes to college sports, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, or softball, Hartsell is pretty much a town divided. But when it comes to our hometown athletes, we are all Team Tiger. And at Agency on Main, we want to be your hometown real estate team. Whether you're buying or selling residential, commercial, land, or auction properties, trust the professionals at Agency on Main for all your real estate needs. Go Tigers! All right, we're back uh, with Coach Newton. Got our Oxford preview. Um, this is a segment I'm excited about because we got a chance to be kind of giant killers. And I know that's putting us um, in a context that you don't usually like to use, but they're 11 and 0. They're ranked number three. Um, are they the best team we've played this year? Yes. Um, they, for sure, they're the best team we've played this year. Um, Coach Adams does a great job um, of getting those guys ready to go. Uh, Coach Cochran's a defensive coordinator. I've known him for years. Um, they're, they're really, really good, and so it's gonna, it's going to be a big challenge. Um, but I, you know, our kids are ready for it, I, and, and I'm I'm gonna have a, such a blast because when you play in these big games and get a chance to, you know, coach our kids in these this big time atmosphere, like you can't ask for anything better. Like that's it's like what, it's why we do what we do, and so I, I'm fired up. So it, you know, I, it's going to be fun. Awesome. Um, Opponents are averaging 13.9 points a game against them. We are a ground and pound kind of offense. They are definitely a, they score a lot, yep. okay? Um, unlike Muscle Shoals, which I, I was looking, you know, I, I've talked to Noah Gibson, we're, we're numbers people, okay? So I was looking at the scores and the breakdowns and things like that, and I liken them to Muscle Shoals, but Muscle Shoals didn't have the schedule that Oxford has. They've beaten the tar out of everybody, and most of their opponents were really good. So what are we looking for with these guys? When we line up, who are we looking for? What are you guys looking for? 
I mean, they're really good up front on both sides. Um, I think, you know, they, everybody knows about the quarterback. I think he's committed to Louisville and the skill guys and all that kind of stuff. But I think they're really good on defense. And that's where we're going to have to, you know, run, run the football and, and it's not going to be easy. But we got guys that, that is going to hit it up in there, and we got offensive linemen that are going to do do a job, and 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 that's where I think you know the rubber meets the road right there. And then we got to win special teams. They're they're really good on special teams too. We're really good too. So if we win that and we can push on either offense or defense, um, you know I, I think we'll be okay. Okay. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, and this week in Hearts of High Athletics, we're going to start on Thursday, November 14th, where bowling is hosting an opponent at River City. Basketball is going to Brewer. On Friday, we're going to take a trip down to Oxford to play football. On Saturday, wrestling is going to Thompson. On Monday, bowling is hosting at River City again. On Tuesday, November the 19th, wrestling is going to Athens. And basketball is hosting Austin. That's this week in Hearts of High Athletics.